Hey everyone, Louis here from the support team. Today I'm going to walk you through the loop options that we have inside our platform. Looping is a fundamental concept that enables you to iterate through repetitive tasks, make transformations to some elements or all elements in an array, and much more. And you can find the loop functions under data manipulation, loops. And we have our most popular for each loop, the for loop, and the while loop. So let's start with the easiest of them all, the for loop. And the for loop is typically used when you want to create a list of items, uh, when you already have a predetermined number of iterations in the loop. So in my example here, I'm looping 10 times, and then I'm going to create 10 different UIDs. And I'm going to add a record to the loops table and reference this UID in this field called field. So what I'm doing here is that I'm looping 10 times, generating 10 different UIDs and adding 10 records. So let's go ahead and run. Let's check our table. And there we go. That's what we have. And now let's see the for each loop. And if what the for each loop does is iterate over each item in the list, repeating the loop for the total number of elements in the array. So to use a for each loop, we need to first have an array. So let's make a query all records of the US states. So let's go ahead and run this. So I have this list of states. So let's iterate over this list and make an edit to a field. So the first input we have here is list. So we have to provide the actual array. The array that we have is returning from this query and the variable is us underscore states one. Good. And what we also have is that each item of this list is represented as a single object returning from the variable item. So let me show you using a stop in debug function what's returning from the item variable. And there you go. We have one element of this list. So let's edit each element of this list. Uh, here's states. And to make sure I'm covering all the elements in the list, I'm using item.id in this field value. And this updated, I'm going to mark as true. So let's go ahead and run. Let's check our database, refresh. And there we go. So we make an edit to each element of that list. Now we are uh, working with a small list. So let's say that we are dealing with a long list with 30, 40, 50,000 records. So one very nice thing about the forge loop is that it works really well with a specific output type from the query all records. That is the stream output type. So if you're making edits to a very long list, I'm going to show you what is the best approach to do it. You would create a task. Make the query. In my case here, I'm querying the US cities. So we have a 30,000 plus cities. I'm changing the output to stream. And then I'm using our forage loop. The list is going to be the US cities. I'm going to make an edit to the record, just like I did with the states. And I'm going to, and the field value is going to be item.id to make the edits to the whole list. And the updated field is going to be marked as true. That's great. And now if I enable this task and schedule it, I have the ability to work with much larger um, arrays without straining my server memory. And now we see the last option of loop, which is the while loop. And the while loop is used when you don't know beforehand the number of iterations that the loop is going to have and making ideal to work with paginated data returning from an external API request. So here we establish a expression 
and the loop's going to repeat for as long as this expression is met. So one very important thing about working with while loops is that at some point you have to break the loop or else you're going to end up with an infinite loop. So I'm going to show you two approaches on how to break this loop. The first one is setting the condition that is going to be true always, like true equals to true. So inside our loop, what we're going to do is generate a random number from 1 to 20, and let's call it number. And now we're going to add a conditional that when number is equals to 10. And here we're going to add a loop function that some functions we use in a, a loop context, but they're not necessarily loops. We basically use them with conditionals. So one is break the loop under some conditional. Uh, we have to continue to the next iteration of the loop. And the forage loop, we can remove that specific entry that is iterating uh, at that moment. And we can remove that specific entry from the forage loop. So now let's break the loop. And to make it easier to visualize, I'm going to add a function that we use to troubleshoot anything loop related, which is the debug log. And the debug log will show all the variations from this number variable here. So let's go ahead and run. Let's see the debug log. So the first iteration of the loop, we had 18, 17, 10, until we got the 10 and we got broken out of the loop. So this is one approach that we can terminate a while loop. The other one is that we can create a variable before the loop. Let's call it number. Let's give it a zero. Let's now use the while loop. Inside the while loop, we're going to generate a random number from 1 to 20. So now we're going to update this variable number with the random number. And we're going to repeat this for as long as the number is not 10. So let's also use the debug log. So let's go ahead and run. So there you go. So we have 19, 5, 14, until we get the 10, and this loop is broken. So basically, there are two approaches. Uh, we have a conditional inside the loop, or a variable that is updated inside the loop. If you have any additional questions, don't forget to leave here in the comments below. For more videos like this, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to learn more about a platform, you can visit our awesome community or refer to our documentation. And if you're stuck with anything in your building, you can always reach out to support um, via live chat within the platform. See you in the next video.